welcome back to Nightly Nerds. I'm Tote. And I'm Ginger. And we're playing Kingdom Hearts Final Kingdom Mix. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. So I moved myself over there for safety save before we start the start the episode so I don't forget. But we got our little mermaid kick. Which it it, it is a pretty good move. We're but moderately faster. Well, okay, because here's the problem. It's like so it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna dodge down, and I'm gonna go up, and I'm mermaid kicking. Because I tried to go up after quickly going down. I'm oh. gonna go up and I'm gonna go down. Nope. Because even though it says to just hit double to, to double tap circle, up and down will both trigger it if you double tap. It doesn't matter. Huh, that's interesting. So So we use it to go against the current to go to this side. Cause if we take the dolphin, the dolphin always takes us left. And then we go here. And we go to the fight that seems to trouble everyone <gasps> so much. She gonna get ginormous? Yep, yep. <gasps> I remember I remember watching Shweeby stream this and she had some she had some problems with it too. Power. Oh no! And rightfully so, like if you don't have the right stats and she does her little bite attack, it uh It'll wreck you? It hurts. <laughs> oh. Before we forget. Man, that's a heck of a, that's a face right there. So my birthday just passed. Yes, you old and, man. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. And um, I won't dignify that with a response. <laughs> you already did. Thank I know. You. Um, but, uh, so people, you know, right, you know, wish me happy birthdays and stuff. And someone posted a picture of me from like last year around the same time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. You, sometimes you don't, you don't see it, you know, when you're in the moment. Oh yeah. And now, after losing all the weight I've lost, looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, what a horrible picture. <laughs> oh, I'm very tasty. Oh, I'm so full of chocolate. Man, he's destroyed her. Yeah. Like granted, she wasn't even there. Granted, I'm not overleveled. I just, like, I have the right keyblade. Yeah. Like, people don't like the, uh, the, like, the shorter keyblades. I don't know why, but they allow you to attack faster. And no matter how strong your hits are, I mean, fast attacks will sometimes wreck enemies when you have that window. Yeah. Please don't be angry with her as I drown this flower keyblade. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't let you follow your heart when you found that crystal. I lost my temper and I pew pewed it. Pew pew. So she never got to be part of that world. Pew. All right, so we seal the keyhole. Yeah, it's in the grotto. And we get Thundaga. Yay. Zoom zoom. Under the sea. Man, it's just. Oh, oh, hold on, can it? Er, can er, I get away er, with it before the monster spawn? Yes, I can. Oh. All for one and one for all. Oh, Goofy turns to do it, but he doesn't have anything. Because he can't hold, he can't hold the shield up, so he has to turn and Let's put turn his, shield. his back to it. Like, ha. What was that for? It's a uh, rare crafting. Material. Oh, rare crafting materials. Oh, that's right. All the monsters are turned off because it's the uh, it's the key locking phase. Oh, oh, for one, the one for all, the super one powerful trident. <gasps> Lock away the heart of the city. There is a sickness in this I land. Uh, the gay mermen, they put the fingers and they the put anus. it in the anus and they eat the poo poo. They eat the poo poo. Do you know the way? That is the most, most 
poorly designed keyblade or uh, keyhole I've seen so far out of all the ones. We you get the trident plus the symbol and it makes a a glassy looking box. It makes a glassy box. Whereas the other ones had like a certain part of the world turned into the keyhole, you locked it and then it went back to normal. What's it like? Oh about that. Sorry for lying to you. <laughs> it's okay. Besides, if you can travel to other worlds, maybe I can too. Nope, you died. I wanna go where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing. Aw, good for you, Ariel. Who voiced Ariel? Was it just generic female actress? I don't know. Do me a favor and leave me out of it. Bonk. Because there's like, I can't, is there, is there an iconic voice from Little Mermaid? I don't know. All right. Maybe so. just uh, the seagull, right? That was that one actor. Yeah. Yeah. Talked out of the side of his mouth, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know yeah. what I'm talking about. I totally forgot he was in... There were, There was a seagull in it until you mentioned it. Well, because we never go to the surface in this, so... The one was like... Wah, wah, <laughs> with the song, the... Kiss the girl. I know you want to... Kiss the, the girl. girl. Ah, stop it! I'm just trying to go down. Let me get out of this hellhole of a world. To the gummy ship. All right, so we're gonna fast travel to Halabastion. Oh, Halabastion! Woo woo! Because as much as I want to do any of the poo, I want to, you know, at the end of this session, I want to be able to grind stuff. Uh huh. So we're gonna go do most of the last world. <gasps> Ooh. So if you want to cut this, well, yeah, we'll can't. just show it. Why not? It's the last one, right? Yeah, it's the last travel point. Wee! So many gummies. Oh, I can't wait till we get to Kingdom Hearts 2. The gummy <laughs> ship is not boring! It's like a bad Star Fox game. Like, <laughs> literally, I could, I could pass the gummy ship in Kingdom Hearts 2 to you, you would have a blast with it, because it's like... An amazing bullet hell Star Fox style style game. Ah. So much so that it has its own like mini games and rewards when you go and do it, as well as different difficulties. Like they add a barrel roll. A barrel roll. So like if you're getting bombarded with a bunch of like bullets, you can barrel roll this way, barrel roll that way, dodge all of them because technically. And in later gummy ships, the cockpit is the only part of the ship that actually can take damage. Oh. <laughs> but everything, everything in Kingdom Hearts 1 is damageable. So, like, realistically, the best ship to make is a cockpit and a bunch of guns and boosters. Yeah. It's a really small, narrow ship. Yeah. That's what I tell the ladies. It's all about being small and narrow. It's better that way. Trust me. I thought this was also a really cool design. End of the world! Of tomorrow. Of tomorrow! Gorge, is that all that's left of the world? <laughs> so, like, yeah, I read through, um... Those worlds will be restored this is how much of a girl I am. I read Pride and Prejudice. This is, like, this is my second time reading it, but I've watched the adaptations of it many times. Especially, yeah. Specifically the BBC one, which I think is the best. Yeah, and uh, BBC has some good adaptations. I got to the ending, and there's like a, anyone who's ever read Pride and Prejudice will know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When, when it's like the the second time Darcy expresses his feelings, and I got emotional. <laughs> I was like, I knew this was coming, but for some reason I was like, oh, he did it! He finally told her how he feels. I got all emotional. I was like, geez, Larry, you read this. You know, multiple times. I've read it at least three times, but yeah, this is my second time reading it. Like just where I just sat down and read it. First time I read it, read it for school, so I didn't really, I don't really count that one. But uh, so then I started reading because I'm. I was. Uh, if, if anyone else there out there is into, wants to just kind of give himself a challenge, I'm doing this right now. Uh, I'm Gutenberg. Uh, it's a Gutenberg project or Project Gutenberg or whatever. 
and it's just they're they're compiling like all the books that are public domain, so you can oh, download yeah, them all yeah. for free. And so there's a top 100, and so that's what I'm going. I'm going down the list right now of the top 100. And uh, number one was Pride and Prejudice. And number two is Mary Shelley's uh, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Who she she wrote that out of, uh, because of a dare. Oh, a combination of, of things. She had a dream. I know that's part of it that scared her. And then yeah, she was she was actually it was kind of those cool things. It was like her and a bunch of other authors all hanging out together. But um, uh. But I was reading it, and I was reading it out loud to the dogs, because I'm at my grandma's house watching them. So I was, like, reading <laughs> Frankenstein out loud, like, in, like, a dramatic voice to the two dogs, because I kind of got bored of just reading to myself. <laughs> I was, like, uh, channeling my inner Patrick Stewart. So I did the whole letters at the beginning that the one guy, the gay guy, is writing to his sister. Oh, yeah. Which I don't really know if he's gay, but he really needs some male companionship, and he talks about it often, so I think he was. <laughs> you know what I want to read again that I haven't since high school? Is mm -hmm. I want to read Beowulf and The Great Gatsby. Hey, that's in the top 100. They probably both are. I know Beowulf is. Be like, people give that story so much crap because, you know, the really bad adap movie adaptations of it. There's only really been one official, like, major film, and that was bad. Yeah. But what? I like. I, did you ever watch Thirteenth Warrior? Yes, I love that I movie. Love that is one of my favorite Warrior. quote unquote bad movies, and it is like it's an adaptation of an adaptation. So it's like Michael Crichton, right? Yep. And he did Thirteenth Warrior, which is similar to like this, the beginning of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I think it's supposed to be letters. Oh yeah. So I actually read it's called uh, Eaters of the Dead or Dead Eaters or something like that. Something like that. What is it? Anyways, and it's a, it's a kind of a version of like if there really is a Beowulf, maybe this is how it was, and they made that into the movie Thirteenth Warrior. What is the name of that? Michael Crichton. Oh, so yeah. So when I finally beat the Pegasus Cup, um, we got the Hercules Keyblade, which looks kind of doofy, and then uh, we got a move called Strike Raid, which lets us throw our Keyblade. So that's what I just used for those that didn't know that. We're going to make it to the end of this. Because there's a boss I want you to see. and Because it was my favorite part about playing Kingdom Hearts 1. It's one of my favorite Disney characters of all time. So much so I have a stupid little hat that looks like freaking uh, Abercrombie and Fitch style of like clothing with the character on it and just, yeah I don't care it's my favorite it's forever my favorite favorite type character the it, it was eaters of the dead that eaters was the, of the Michael day. Crichton book which essentially is a retelling of Beowulf that was then made into the movie 13th warrior nice So if I if anyone wants to watch Beowulf and you don't want to watch the bad Beowulf, watch that one. It's kind of like a uh, hi, uh. like okay, so like a, a way of saying it's like it's like a realistic Beowulf. Yeah. Like where they're not necessarily it's not ne there's not necessarily Grendel and the mother and Grendel's mother. And as much as like I hated the Angelina Jolie Beowulf, uh huh, they did a really good job portraying Grendel. I actually watched it, so I wouldn't know. Um, it, she's the mother, right? Yeah, she's the mother. Um, Anthony Hopkins is the king. The one that's the one that calls for Beowulf to come help. Yeah. Uh, and if anyone's ever read Beowulf, it's a, it's a good story. It's, a it's one of the oldest stories. English stories, I yes. believe. And yeah, so like they did a great adaptation of of Grendel because Grendel is, um, you know, they made him look very grotesque, human-like, but almost reptilian. He's uh. Instead of like ears and ear sockets, he has uh, he has like these vibrating, uh, it's almost speaker-like bulbs that are sensitive to sound. Yeah, and shows it off, and like he's he's constantly speaking like old Germanic. Uh huh. And I'm just like, this is a great 
great adaptation for for Grendel, like 100. percent I think the part of the problem was they did that whole like capture CGI thing. Yes. So it looked weird and it just didn't translate well. Like they either didn't need to go one way or the other. You need to do complete live action or go complete CG. Yes. They did this halfway thing that weirded people out. And then that it wasn't that well done, and they no. they concentrated on Grendel's mother too much. They did because it was Angelina Jolie. That's twice Angelina, first Gr first Grendel's mother, then Maleficent. How dare you! <laughs> well, that was Disney's fault for being. Uh, yeah, I'm just being for doing Wicked Two. <laughs> Wicked Two. Um. So it was so it was funny. We mentioned it, and we, I think we were talking about it last time. But like the uh, live action adaptations of Disney movies, uh -huh, uh -huh. and we were talking about Beauty and the Beast. But so like as soon as I went home last week, my parents were watching it, and I'm just like, man, I freaking love this movie because Dan Stevens plays a great freaking beast, and he has a good voice for the beast, and oh, it was so good, so good. Like this they, is the behemoth thing, right? Yeah. It's Fighting second, another one? Second time we fought it, because there's going to be a bunch of them, because it's the end game. Pick up all the loots. <laughs> Donald. <laughs> like out of nowhere. <laughs> okay, I want to see if I can just skip this whole area. Because it's, it's supposed to be like a minor puzzle thing where you're like, climb up and down and down and up and... But I think if I just glide to different locations, specifically uh, this one. Oh. Need that for crafting later. But then we fly over here. But yeah, so we got Strike Raid from finishing the Pegasus Cup. Which lets us throw our Keyblade. Ah. And it's one of those things we need to fight Sephiroth later. Because he'll do this move that'll, like, drop us down to one HP with no mana. Uh-huh. And so we pull out Strike Raid and just chuck it at him because he's, he's far enough away and we can't catch up to him fast enough. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Meteor Strike! I just want to get us to the bottom or the, the next little area because if I recall this, yeah, that's down here. Whee! That'll end this episode. All right, everybody, that's going to end this episode of Nightly Nerds. As always, I'm Tote. And I'm Ginger. And we'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hey, did you like that video? Well, if you did, click the box on the right for another. Click the box on the left for a playlist. Of course, you could always just subscribe by clicking the link in the middle. Come find us on social media. There are links in the description below. Don't be afraid to leave us a comment. Thanks for watching. I'm Tote. I'm Ginger. See you then. Bye.